Hey guys, and welcome back. My name is Jake, and on this channel, I teach you guys how to build apps, agents, and automations, all using no-code and low-code technologies. In this video series, I'm going to show you how to build your own AI storytelling app using Flutterflow and Google Gemini. This is a beginner's tutorial, so I'm going to assume that you have little to zero experience. This video series will be broken up into three parts, including the setup, the building of the UI, and then of course connecting everything and making it seamless. So in this video, we're gonna focus on getting our project set up, including our Flutterflow, and then of course Firebase, which will have our authentication, storage, and our AI logic. So let's go ahead and jump into Flutterflow and get building. So head over to flutterflow.io and go ahead and go through the onboarding if you haven't by just simply creating an account. And once you go through that, you'll see something that looks similar to this. You will probably have zero projects created. Um, that's okay. What we're gonna do is come up here in this top corner and click create new. This is how you create a new project. And you can name this project whatever you want. But for my use case, I'm gonna call this story generator. And I'm going to click start building because I don't wanna use a template. It's gonna take a couple seconds to create, and we're just gonna wait here ever so patiently. And you may get a pop-up screen that walks you through setting up your design system. If you wanna set up Firebase, go ahead and close out of that because we're gonna do that right now. So next up, we're gonna to wanna to come over here to this little gear icon that says settings and integrations and click on that. This is all your app settings. And in your project setup right here, go ahead and click on Firebase. Now we're gonna click on this Create Project button and it automatically generates a project name and a project ID for you. What you'll need to do is select the region that you're based in. If you're anywhere in the United States, just select NAM5 and then go ahead and sign in with Google. Now this will take about three to five minutes for it to create, so just sit back, relax, grab a drink of water or something, and come back once this is done. So once your Firebase project has been created, go ahead and click on this generate configuration files. And this will take about a minute to generate and make sure you don't close out of this. Once that's done configuring, we are going to want to head over to firebase.google.com and go into your console. You should if this is your first time creating an app, only have one Firebase project here, and that will match that project name and ID that you created in the earlier step. Go ahead and open that up, and you will see your Firebase project overview. Now the first step we're actually gonna do is upgrade to a pay-as-you-go plan. What this will do is it will allow us to have additional services that you can't get on the free plan, such as like authentication, their AI logic, and so much more. In my experience, this typically only runs about like two cents a month, uh, if you don't have, of course, thousands of thousands of users, but you can always set a budget if you are concerned. Create a billing account if you don't have one, or in my case, I do, so I'm just gonna click on this next button here, and of course, I will just set a budget that I feel comfortable with. $25 is okay. And I'm gonna link that billing account. Now, once we've upgraded, there's a couple things that we're gonna to wanna to do from here. Inside our build, we are going to click on authentication and we are going to go ahead and enable this by clicking on get started. And then next we're gonna click on our native providers, email and password. Just hit enable and save. From there, we are also going to want to enable storage. This is where you can hold your images for your app. So we're gonna go ahead and click get started. You can select a no cost location or you can choose a location this is a paid option. Again, it probably runs you two cents, but uh, just go with the no cost location and select the area that you're located in. So I'm gonna select East and continue. And we're actually gonna start this in production mode because Flutterflow handles all the security rules. 
So let's go ahead and click create. And this will take about a second. Next, we're going to want to come back into build, click on Firestore database. This should automatically be enabled. This is where we will build out our data structure, but it's good to have it here as a quick reference. And then lastly, we're gonna to wanna to come into AI logic and click get started. It's gonna ask you, hey, how do you wanna do this? The developer API or Vertex? Flutter flow runs on the Vertex AI API. So we're gonna click on get started with this API. Enable APIs. We're just gonna click enable through these. It, they do take a minute, so just be patient with it. Uh, click continue. And now we're gonna to wanna to click on continue with the last one. This will redirect us to this AI logic place where it's asking us to add this, but we are all set for Firebase now. So let's head over back to Flutterflow. And now we can go ahead and deploy our storage rules. Next, we're gonna head over to our Firestore tab and start setting up our database. So we're gonna create a collection. And if you guys are not familiar with NoSQL, or SQL in general, it's just a database structure. They do have some slight variations, but I'm gonna try doing my best to explain them as we go through. So our first collection, a table, is we want to store users inside here. A user is anyone that logs in, signs up through the app. Um, they are going to have a couple different fields. It's gonna to try to populate this for us ahead of time. We can just hit yes. And it's gonna populate it with a email, display name, photo URL, and the general fields. Our next table that we're going to want is called stories. So each one of our generated stories is going to be held into a collection called stories. And we are going to define this schema. So first thing we want is a user ID. And why this is important is because it helps Firebase know who created the story, who has access to it. So we're gonna give it a field name of user ID and a data type of a document reference. This reference is gonna point back to the users and just click check. Next, we're gonna want a title for a story. This will be some type of text or a string We'll want the body of the story. This also will be some type of text or a string. And then we're gonna have some standard fields like created at date time, updated at. These are just standard fields that you typically wanna have when you're working with any type of data. And then lastly, we're gonna want an image URL. So some type of cover image that Gemini will generate for us based on the story. And this is going to be an image path. Now from there, we're going to want to deploy the schema to Firebase. So click on this gear icon up here. And this gives you your Firebase rules and schema validation. Um, to make our life a little bit easier, we're gonna change everything to every one, and then just hit on this deploy here. It's gonna show you what Firebase rules have changed, and just hit on deploy now. Okay guys, we're close to being done. There's just four more things that we gotta do that will take no time at all. So firstly, what we're gonna do is come over to our widget tree and add two new pages. These are gonna be our sign in and sign up pages. So I'm gonna click on auth and then add a create account page. You can select whichever one you like here. And my preference, I like this one. So I'm just gonna click on my theme, create page, 
And I'm going to do the same thing to add a login page. And I'm going to use the login one page, my theme, create page. Now that we have that done, it enables us to add authentication. So coming down to our project settings, we are going to go into the authentication tab here. Click on enable authentication. You can choose your provider. It should automatically default to Firebase. Then we're going to select an entry page or a signed out and a signed in page. So our signed out page is going to be the create account and our logged in page is going to be the home page. Now, if you guys want to spend some time designing your colors and typography, by all means, this would be the time to do that. I'm going to save some time. I'm going to use a pre-built UI kit or design kit that Flutterflow provides by simply going to my project dependencies, clicking on Flutterflow libraries, and typing in shad CN UI library. This will add a bunch of different things to your project, such as custom colors, app states, data types. Don't worry about that right now. It's just, again, it's the pre-built UI library. Now I can go back into my design system, click on the design system tab, and select my shad UI kit. So we can see that that has changed all of this. It's gone ahead and changed all of that. It just makes my life easier and faster. Now the next step from here is to actually create our AI agent. We are going to click on this agents tab and hit the plus icon. You can give this any name that you so choose. I'm going to call it storyteller. Well, if I can spell it correctly, storyteller and create. Now here you can select your provider. They offer a couple different ones, OpenAI, Google, Anthropic. We had already set everything up for Google, so we're just gonna click on Google. It says, hey, there are some requirements. We've already done this. We've connected our project to Firebase. We've enabled authentication, and we enabled uh, AI logic inside Firebase. So all we have to do is select the model that we want. And in this case, it's going to be Gemini 2.5 Pro because it gives us a bunch of different request options. This tutorial is only going to cover the text and image, but if you wanna explore audio, video, just let me know down in the comments below. I might create a video on those if I get enough traction. So let's go ahead and select image, and then our response type will end up being JSON, so meaning we'll have to define the JSON schema. We'll come back and do that later in video three, but right now we're just going to set a system message. I have a prompt copied and pasted that I'm ready to put in. I'll add this in the description down below. You guys can just copy and paste it if you're following along. Essentially, it's just saying you're a storyteller agent, create a story with captivating plot lines, use creativity, et cetera, et cetera. And then we're gonna need some type of internal description. An agent for creating captivating stories. Excellent, now we can go ahead and publish. And we are all set, guys. And with that being said, guys, we have successfully set up our Flutterflow and Firebase project to begin building out the UI for this AI storytelling app. If you guys like this type of content and want to see more of it, please consider giving me a like, comment, and subscribe. It really does mean the world to me, and I appreciate each and every one of you. So, with that being said, I will see you guys in part two, and until then, take care, have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye now.